Welcome to Hope for All Ministry. Oh, 
the book, Last Day's Events, page 26, paragraph 4. It says, Satan is working in the atmosphere. And here we are depending upon God for our lives, our present and eternal life. And being in the position that we are in now, we need to be wide awake, wholly devoted, wholly converted, wholly consecrated to no one else but God. But we seem to sit as though we were paralyzed, too comfortable, too wayward. The sun rises in the east and goes down in the west, and everything seems to be all right. When the man of sin is carefully planning his attack, and God's people is relaxing as one writer some singer said easy like Sunday morning may God of heaven help us to awake but also in the same book last day's event page 24 paragraph 1 it stated that the tempest is coming and we must get ready for its fury by having repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord will arise yes. to shake terribly the earth. Amen. We shall see troubles on all sides. Thousands of sheep will be hurled into the depths of the sea. Navies will go down and human lives will be sacrificed by millions. Fires will break out unexpectedly and no human effort will be able to quench the flames of disaster. You see, the palaces of earth will be swept away in the fury of the flames. Disaster by rail will become more and more frequent. Confusion, collision, and death without a moment's warning. And this will occur on the great lines of travel. The end is near. Probation is closing. Oh, let us seek God, church. Let us seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is there. But there, even in the midst of turmoil, there is this word, hope. You see, the good news is that there is still hope today. Yes. While we have breath and can see and can understand with the knowledge that God has given us, there is still hope. This world is not in the hands of man, Amen. but is still in con God is still in control. He's still in charge down here. 
The Bible says in 1 Samuel 2.10, the adversaries of the Lord. And who is the adversaries church? The devil. The, devil. the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the hands of the earth. And he shall give strength unto his king. And exalt the horns of his anointed. I would like you to take note. The Lord's presence in, is, in power is often associated with thunder. And he is unequaled and unreviled in his authority. Amen. The mention of God's king, his anointed, his predictive of the messianic king of whom each king in the Davidic line was ideally an earthly representative. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. He reigns in heaven above yes. with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Although God is in charge of this universe, He is not responsible for the mess this world is in. Amen. But there are some people today who are posing question in their anger by saying, where is God when my son got murdered? Where is God when my daughter got raped and then murder. He is so loving. And why, if he's so loving, does he allow so many things to happen? Church, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord because of sin brothers and sisters it's hands down to us so we have the nature of sin and because of that we are not exempt from trials from hardship from anything that the devils throw at us but God the one whom we worship and serve is able to keep us through the perils of these atrocities. The question I ask, can God be blamed for Adam's sin, church? No. Why? Because it is Adam who made this choice. So then God cannot be blamed for the terrorist who crashes the Boeing 767 in the World Trade Center. No, he cannot be blamed. Why? Because those terrorists act upon the cunning advice of the devil himself. How about these viruses such as COVID, anthrax, H1N1, SARS, etc.? That plagues this world. Must God be blamed church? No. no. The Bible. Again. Says in Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is. But. The gift of God. Is eternal life. And that's. Beautiful part of it. Note, the word wages emphasizes what we deserve. And gift of God emphasizes God's unmerited favor. Amen. God does everything in his power to save us and for us to escape the darts of the wiles of the devil. He does the best thing in the best way 
say at the best time for the best purpose. So to make God responsible for crime, drugs and terrorism, etc. is to make a devil out of him. Bible says in 1 John 4 10, hearing is love. Not that we love God, but that he love us yes. and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. Amen. And take note again that according to what this text is saying, no human love is the standard for understanding God's great compassion. Amen. But God's own action on man's behalf, the word propitiation is here an atoning sacrifice. Jesus bore in his body the punishment due to us for our sins. What we must understand in church is that God didn't sin. He did it for me and for you. Amen. And every time that we act upon the wiles of the devils and, 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 and get contact with his doings, it's like we're repeatedly plunging the nails mm. in his hands yeah. and his feet. Yes. All God wants is to save us. But because of our wretchedness and stubbornness, fight our way out of his hands, the safest hands that we can ever think of. Yes, amen. And when we lodge in the hands of the devil, then we're going on bending knees. Oh Lord of mercy. Do we deserve his mercy? In so doing, his propitiated God sacrifice or satisfy God's just demand that sin be punished. Thus, Jesus is both the advocate for sinners as we read in verse 1 of 1 John chapter 2 which says, my little children, these things write I unto you that he sin not. And if any man sin, what do we have? Yes. An advocate. Yes. An advocate yes. with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. The word advocate here is a large term for one who intercede for another. So the Bible proves that the devil is responsible for the problems down here. In Luke chapter 13, 11 and 12, it says, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, Thou art loose Amen. from thine infirmity. So Jesus healed the woman. And who do you think caused her to have a curved spine? The devil. In Luke 13, Jesus is speaking now. Verse 16. And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound? Lo, these 18 years be loose from this bound on the Sabbath day. So, so who bound her, her church? Satan. He is the one who do things different from God. God comes to save. But the Bible said that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So why do we want to lodge in his hands? 
Don't you know God's hands is the safest hands to be? Satan is responsible. So those who think that our great God is evil, please erase that thought. It is proven that Satan is responsible for all the crimes, drugs, diseases, and pestilence down here. God is not responsible, but he allows it. Yes. And why? It is proven to Satan that although, although he is the prince of the earth, there are still people on earth who have made up their mind that comes what may. Their plan is to serve the creator of the world rather than that wretched old dragon called Satan. Amen. Amen. There is still someone in the midst of turmoil who decide I will not let go Christ no matter what. Let that be our saying today, brothers and sisters. Amen. No matter what the, the armory that the, the, the wicked ones are sharpening for us in the latter days to come, let us be true to God and say, God, comes what may, please take me through this by your grace. You see, the story of Job in the Bible as a classic example of the great controversy as it relates to suffering and many of us today can relate to suffering it is found in the book and the subject of the book reveals the mystery of human suffering his suffering happened very rapidly Job loses his children and his life stopped. All of that he ever had. But Job is honest inside. Out and total devoted to his God. Amen. Are we honest and totally devoted to our God today, brothers and sisters? Amen. You, we have a choice. Remember, the God who comes to this earth, die on a cross. He didn't have to do it. But because of his love for his children, he had to do what he got to do. The Bible says in Job 1, verse 1, there was a man, there was a man in the land of Hus, when I read this part, I say to myself, Does, can God say today, there is a man or there's a woman in the United States or in Jamaica or wherever whose name was Joe and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and is true and evil. Can God say that to us today, brothers and sisters? Note, four great attributes are described to Job here. Perfect, upright, fear God, and it's short. Means, he shunned evil. His life could not have been more exemplary. You see, church, the devil hates a man like that who uphold the standard of God precepts in righteousness. And when we do the same today, we come under severe attack. Because when he sees that we are going on God's side, he interrupts everything for us to say, you know, I give up. But never give up. Because there is hope today. He hates a man who loves honor and affectionate to his wife and live in accordance to God's will. He hates a man who stays away from worldly lifestyle, the glitters and the glamours. 
the high life and failed to be inducted in bad influences that gives worship to him who deserve only to die. We can't set up ourselves with the devil because the devil is all about failure. He put things before us pretty. The Bible says that the road that is broad, smooth and beautiful and there be many that go through that road but for those who come to Christ, you have to try the straight and narrow path. Yeah. Amen. Because that path leads to life eternal. Amen. <laughs> but then he had to live out what left of his life until the king of glory comes and restore this earth to its original state. In verse 2 of Job 1, there were and there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yokes of oxen and 500 she hasses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the man of the east. Not only was Joe's life blameless and upright, he is rich, very prosperous, numerous children, especially sons, and abundant livestock, world statues, symbols of wealth and greatness in that day. The devil wants to break his loyalty to God but he must get approval. The Bible says in Job 1, 6 to 12, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? You see, I like the phrases of the King James Version. That's why I use it. When I said, Holy Spirit, please lead me in understanding. You can rest assured, brothers and sisters. You will be understood. So he says, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it, and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant, my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, That Job fear God for naught. Hast not thou made an edge about him? And about his house, and about all that he had on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hand, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he had, and he will curse thee to thy face. You're gonna give you're gonna give the devil a run now. For this star that he has. And the Lord said unto Satan. Behold. All that he had. Is in thy power. Only. Upon himself. Put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth. From the presence. Of the Lord. Brothers and sisters. It's test time now. Just as what happened to Job. A time is coming, brothers and sisters, when we are going to be tested. We are tested even now. And if we're tested in just a minor thing, when the bigger portion comes, what will our test patient be? 
My prayer today, brothers and sisters, for all of us, that we are seated firmly in the hands of God. And no matter what the curves or darts that the devil may throw at us, the angel of the Lord, the Bible says, encampment round about them that fear God. So, in chapter 1, verse 6, the Bible speaks of sons of God. In this passage, refers to angelic beings. Satan is considered one of them. Though fallen from his original sin, sinless state, his name means adversary. And in this narrative, he lives up to his meaning. The passage show that Satan has access to God's presence, though this does not seem to be Satan's abode. His final casting out from heaven is described in Revelation 12 verse 10 where he calls the accuser of our brethren. And I wanted to take note also in, in, in chapter 1 verse 7 when he says he is roaming the earth from going to and fro in the earth. This refers to Satan's activity, though he does not admit it here. Satan's character clearly shows that his many travels are for evil purpose. In 1 Peter 5, 8, Satan is described as your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The activity of Satan indicates that he has only limited access to God. This account in Job emphasizes that God is sovereign over Satan. It also teaches that Satan is a finite being and therefore not omnipresent. Nor can he touch God's servant without God's permission. And if God does not permit him to touch any one of us, he can't. All that he can do, brothers and sisters, is to throw darts before you. But when you fall, don't stay there. Rise up, brothers and sisters. The Bible speaks about a seven times rise, seven times fall. Seven times fall, seven times rise. If you stay down there, you're done. So, Satan always a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The activity of Satan indicates that he has only limited access to God. This account in Job emphasizes that God is sovereign over Satan. It also teaches that Satan is infinite being and therefore not omnipresent. The only one who is omnipresent is God. Amen. Note in chapter 1 verse 8, the initiatives in the conversation lies with God, but he may well have simply expressed what was on Satan's mind. God's view of Job is the same as the description given in chapter 11. Note also in, chap in chapter 1, Job 1, 9 to 11, Satan acknowledged the accuracy of God's evaluation of Job, but questioned Job's motive. The question is why people serve God is as important as the question as suffering in this story. The word edge in verse 10 represents all that God does to protect his children. A godly man is invincible until God is finished with him. Amen. 
God permits but does not order Satan to test Job. Satan's power is always exercised under the control of God. He is limited by the unlimited power of God. Amen. With all that is happening, Job does, does not know what is taking place in the supernatural realm. But God is willing to play that game because in the great controversy, evil will never triumph. Bible says in Job 1 13 to 19 Job is afflicted and, and within 12 hours his children and livestock is totally gone everything but take note here the disaster that before Job were of human agency Sabines and Chaldeans and of natural sources, fire and wind. Though Satan power was behind it, all Sabines were a, a, a no, nomadic, the Boeing tribe known for their treachery and cruelty. They often plunder other peoples as a means of survival. On the other hand, the, 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 the Chaldeans were also a band of nomadic marauders of this time. They later conquered Babylon. All of these tragic events event evidently took place on the same day and of all the hundreds of, of Job's servants, only four survived to bear the bad news. Human lives was lost in all four disaster. The Sabines killed his servant and take away his oxen. The fire of God burned up the sheep and the servant. Was it really the fire of God? Chaldeans carried away the camels. A hurricane destroyed his children. Hurricane are called act of God. Are they really act of God? Job 1, 21 to 22, this is Job speaking and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return hither. The Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in verse 22, in all that Job sin not, nor change, nor charge God foolishly. So in spite, brothers and sisters, of these terrible losses, Job still worshiped God. What do you say, church? Amen. And Satan fails right there. When Satan thought that he had God on the cross, he feels good until God, God, Jesus, God sent to raise his son and said, bring forth my son. That Sunday morning, Satan lose again. Amen. And he will always lose. Amen. He only wins when you allows him to win. Listen, church, when you think about the goodness of God and what he has done for you, don't let him down. Yes, we may fall by the wayside, but with a prayer, rise up and continue to walk and serve the living God. Yes, Satan fails. So instead of cursing God, Job worship him. My brothers and sisters, when you are downtrodden, when you have all kind of distraction against you, diseases or whatsoever, don't don't make it seem as if you're you're not supposed to be falling in this. It is a part of our life until God comes. 
like I said before, we are not exempt from trials nor anything. But God can take us through it. And when God takes us through a church, we will come out triumphant. Yes. He had lost two of life's most precious possession, family and wealth. Yet he remained upright. A third blessing, his health was left alone. The question is, church, did God take anything from Job? No. God cut a deal with the devil, proving that in spite of the devil's tricks and trade. God still has someone who will stand up for him no matter what. And because of this, Job doesn't know what is happening. And so he blames God in a positive way. Though he slay me, yet when I Oh, thanks be to God. Satan goes back to God in Job 2 verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And so Satan arrives uninvited and God uses a bit of irony in humiliate Satan in verse 3. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? And there is that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and extort evil, and still he behold fast his integrity, although thou knowest me against him, movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Satan now seek permission to inflict Job himself in verse 4 and, and 5. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a, that a man had will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bones and his flesh and he will curse thee to thy face. And Satan again is proven wrong. But why was God, God so willing to go along with Satan's plan? You see, I always say, you know, I want God to brag about me. You know, as feeble as I am, I want God to brag about me and say, if you consider my servant Patrick, man. Many times when I when I read stories, especially like Jonah, and God sent him to, to, to Nineveh and he keeps running away. Man, if God sent me anywhere and I know that he's the creator, I would go. As the song says, I go where you want me to go, dear Lord. Over land or mountain or sea. I'll say what you want me to say, dear Lord, and I'll be what you want me to be. God sent me out. I'm empowered because nobody can touch me. No. I am protected by the supreme being, the one with the power from on high. Amen. Praise the Lord. Church, don't stop serving God. Never do that. Never do that. Yes. So God knew the outcome and he knew his servant very well. But it was a test for Job. A test that he never knows about. Who God blessed church. No man curse. No matter what Satan will do. God still in charge. And that is a message for Satan. And the message for us today. Is to remind us. That God will never leave us. Nor forsake us. If Satan only knew what Job's story has done for us today, yes. <laughs> he would have left Job long time ago. 
Because when we read the Bible stories and what they go through, it else empowers us, you know. Because one day we are going to go through these things. And remember the Bible says that this is what to come is going to be has never been there a nation. You realize how serious it's going to be? Church, buckle up. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Remain steadfast. Unmovable. Because God is reigning. And I tell you, you know, all this weaponry that they are planning for us, it's going to turn right back to them. Praise God. In Job 2 verse 7, the Bible says, So when Satan fought from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with some boils, the sole of his feet unto his crown, Satan afflicted Job and his body is filled with boils and Job's wife who is unaware of God's guaranteed that Job's life would not be taken away from him makes a profound foolish request. In Job 2.9, the, the Bible said, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Who want to do that? Who want to do that, brothers and sisters? I tell you this. You see, sometimes when you follow some bad companies, they let you down into the wrong path. And until you meet in some serious problem or trouble, then you realize your eyes are open. Curse God and die. No Job's wife suggests that Job do what Satan had predicted. Curse God. After all she had been through, it is no wonder she was already to give up all hopes. No matter what you're going through, brothers and sisters, there is still hope. There is hope for the man who decided to put a noose around his neck. There is hope for the man who decided to put a gun to his head. There is hope. There is always someone who you can call and talk with. There is hope, brothers and sisters. But Job recognized that both good and evil comes from God's hands. Though one of his active will and the other by his permissive will. You see, church, God can permit evil things to happen for good ends. Remember in Genesis 50. And verse 19 and 20, oh, Joseph comforts his brethren. What the brothers had meant for evil, God had intended for good. This is one of the clearest declaration of divine providence found anywhere in the Bible. Reminding us today that God's purpose prevailed over the evil, of, evil act of man. Now look at this turnaround. Job, a rich man, is now poor. He once had everything, but now he has nothing. So let me ask you a question, church. Who made him poor? Satan. Who stirred up the hurricane that destroyed his children? Satan. Who stole his livestock? Come on, come on, church. You know, talk, talk to me, talk to me. So, so who tempt his wife to disbelieve and disobey God? Satan, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Satan do nothing good. Nothing, brothers and sisters. In Job 42, verse 12, the Bible said, So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. So God brought an end to Job's suffering and set him free to enjoy life again. And what was the eventual outcome of his suffering? Restoration, church. God restore restoration of Job is immediate and bountiful. 
He is given friends in verse 11. Material prosperity in verse 12. Family in verse 13 to 15. And long life in verse 16 and 17. Church, the point to be gained from the book of Job is not that God intended to deal with every servant as abundantly as he did with Job. Rather that God holds sovereign and loving sways over every human life. Therefore he, God, can be trusted implicitly in all things. Amen. The story also shows that in the great controversy between good and evil is still between good and evil God is still in charge and if God is in charge humanity is not hopeless so get it out of your head today there is still hope over many years over many years ago God showed his love and concern for humanity by sending his only begotten son to die he suffered mentally and physically but thanks be to God today he is alive the tomb is very much empty the question remains is humanity hopeless church no it's not our emancipator is alive and one day soon when our emancipator comes back and take care of a few things down here and then we will he will revive this land revitalize this land he will renew this land regenerate restore breathe new life reviving and revitalizing what God will do to this land he will re, re he will reanimate, he will resuscitate, he will refresh this land, reawaken, rekindle, kickstart, uplift, reorganize, reconstruct, renovate, overall, revamp and modernize this place and give it a beautiful landscape eyes have never seen before. There will be no more disease. And by the way, too, there's a, a, a Marburg virus that breaks out of its cage in Africa today. Tanzania and, and New Guinea, much worse than COVID. And authority now are scrambling like rats yes. to maintain. But in the new world to come, there will be no disease, no pestilence, no disaster, no death. There will be peace in the valley, church, yes. for me and for you, everlasting peace. And that peace that passes all understanding, that no man could give, but God himself will give that peace. And today, we need to have it. We cannot share peace outward and then inward. It has to begin with you. And when it begins with you, you spread it abroad. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Amen. can you see if Job can go through it without, uh, without knowing yes. that it is a test? He holds on to the hope of God. Yes. Today, we must hold on to the hope of God. Yes. Remain steadfast in his hands, church. If God doesn't appoint your time, no one can do anything to you. May the grace of God be upon you today, church. Amen. May you constantly recognize that God is in charge, no matter what your circumstances. May you continue to worship him. May you continue to serve him. And may you continue to obey him. May God bless you all today. Amen. 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 The sky is shut and full. Preparing is a joy. The stars will 
Say. Hey.